Tonight, the King 5 investigators expose fraud, waste, and abuse in our state's biggest transportation projects. The problems are in a program that's supposed to help minority and women-owned contractors get a fair shot at working on these mega projects. Here's Susanna Frame with her first story in a continuing investigation, Fraud on the Job. Larger in motion. Zorn. Back in the early 80s, the Seattle Seahawks roster included a local star, number 63, Fred Anderson. Touchdown, Seattle! After pro ball, Anderson moved from the end zone to the construction zone, where he launched another successful career. Lee Jack Concrete Construction, run out of this office in Mount Lake Terrace. For 20 years, Anderson's been a leader and mentor in the construction community. In 2007, Lejack was named the fastest growing minority owned business in the region. In this home video, he talks about giving internships to needy teens. We're just happy that we could, we could provide an opportunity for him here. And uh, he seems to be a real good young man. In the last few years, Lee Jacks hauled in lucrative contracts on some of our state's biggest construction projects. Since 2008, more than $8 million worth of government work, in part because Lee Jacks is certified Disadvantaged Business Enterprise, or DBE. By law, general contractors must hire DBEs on jobs funded with federal dollars. The federal government wants to make sure struggling minority and women-owned businesses get a fair shot at the work. The program is still just as important today as it was when it was started back in the 70s. Victor Valdez of Capital Community Development says the DBE program opens doors that historically have been shut for women and minorities. It does allow them access to opportunities that otherwise they'll be excluded from. No doubt. No doubt. But the King 5 investigators have found this star of the DBE program is taking unfair advantage of it. We've discovered a pattern of general contractors hiring Lee Jack to perform concrete pumping to help meet that DBE mandate. But on the job site, Lee Jack's a no-show. Take the Spokane Street widening project. Two years ago, the general contractor, PCL, gave Lee Jack a $180,000 contract to pump concrete on the job. But King 5 has obtained records of a state DOT investigation showing while Lee Jack collected thousands of tax dollars to do the job, there's no evidence Lee Jack performed any of the work. Did he have any equipment to do the work? No. Employees? No. Evidence of paying people directly? No. Or of being the boss? No. Melissa Hopkins is a former state DBE investigator who examined Washdot's records on the Spokane Street project. They caught him red-handed. Um, there was nothing he could do to say that he wasn't doing exactly what they said he was doing. Who was doing the work? Not Lee Jack, not another DBE, but a giant in the concrete industry, Ralph's Concrete Pumping. Washdot investigators took these shots on Spokane Street. No sign of Lee Jack, but a whole lot of Ralph's. Ralph's equipment, Ralph's employees, Ralph's managers. There was a Ralph's Concrete trailer on site. Trailer, on site, office trailer. Not Lee Jack. Ralph's. How bizarre is that? This is how it worked. The general contractor, PCL, hired Lee Jack because of that mandate to use DBEs. But that was just on paper. Lee Jack hired Ralph's to do the actual work and took an extra cut along the way, adding to the cost for taxpayers. King 5 looked at billing records where a typical payday went like this. PCL pays Lee Jack $1,100. Lee Jack pays Ralph's $998 for doing the work. Lee Jack pockets the difference, 112 bucks. Over a year of paydays like that, Lee Jack collected more than $40,000 for simply lending his name and minority status to the job. 40,000 wasted taxpayer dollars. So we're paying this guy to do nothing? That must be nice. I mean, I'd like to get paid to do nothing. Six months after the Spokane Street investigation, this anonymous complaint came into the state about a UW construction job, accusing Lee Jack again of not following the rules. That complaint went to this tiny state agency, the Office of Minority and Women Business Enterprises, OMWBE. The agency's job is to certify DBEs who qualify for the program and to decertify companies who cheat or get too big. Melissa Hopkins was the OMWBE investigator assigned to the new Lee Jack complaint. They needed to determine if there was a pattern of behavior, if this was his mode of operation. Did he normally not do the work and have other people do the work for him? And if that was the case, then I needed to prove that to remove him from the program. 
she found Spokane Street wasn't a fluke. The same suspicious setup appeared to be underway on five other Lee Jack government jobs, including the Alaskan Way Viaduct, the Sound Transit Station at Husky Stadium, and the UW Business School. He was a front company. That's how we classify it as. Someone who gets the contracts and gives the work to someone else and takes a cut. And there's more. The King 5 investigators uncovered evidence of identical activity on three more public works projects, the Murray Morgan Bridge in Tacoma, East Lake Sammamish Parkway improvements, and the South Park Bridge in Seattle. The pattern again. Lee Jack gets the job, Ralphs does the work, Fred Anderson takes a cut. After all this, the damning washout report on Spokane Street, the evidence of Lee Jack's sham involvement on other jobs, the wasted taxpayer dollars. After all this, what did OMWBE do? They sent Lee Jack this two-page letter. Congratulations, you're recertified. Your business is still in the DBE program. <sighs> I was furious. I was disgusted. Um, I, I couldn't believe what had happened. So what did happen? The director of OMWB wouldn't talk to us on camera, but in an email she said her investigator on the job, Melissa, blew it by not following protocol on the case and by not gathering enough evidence to remove the company from the program. This is a claim that the investigator denies. Tonight, the King 5 investigators expose more problems in our state's minority contracting program. The program is designed to help minority-owned companies known as Disadvantaged Business Enterprises, or DBEs. But King 5 investigator Susanna Frame exposes a trucking company in the program unfairly collecting millions of your tax dollars as she continues her investigation fraud on the job. <laughs> It's becoming more and more of a reality that, you know, I'm at the verge of losing my business. For more than 20 years, business owner Elton Mason's worked behind the wheel of a big rig, driving a 40,000-pound dump truck and trailer. I mean, it's rusting out, and it's been sitting for months. But in the last five years, his equipment spent more time rusting than working. How many uh, truck and trailer units do you have? 13, 13 units. And today, how many of them are on the road working? None. Mason's company is a certified DBE. He's in a program designed to give struggling minority-owned businesses a shot at getting jobs on big transportation projects. But it's not working out that way for Elton Mason. American dream is just, sorry, it's, it's gone. Gone. But that dream is rolling down the freeway at full speed for another DBE. Brady excavated a dump trucking company in the program because it's owned by another minority, a woman, Kim Grady of Muckleteo. Her company became a certified DBE three and a half years ago, and so far, they're a DBE success story. The programs helped Grady Excavating haul in tons of gravel, dirt, and tax dollars. 14 million for work on the 520, 7 million more for the Seattle Tunnel Project. According to state records, more than $38 million since 2008 for government jobs. $38 million worth of work slated for disadvantaged, struggling small businesses. But we found evidence suggesting Brady Excavating never should have been admitted into the program in the first place. That case has haunted me since I left the agency. Janae Radabaugh was an investigator for the state agency that makes sure only companies that meet the criteria make it in. The Office of Minority and Women's Business Enterprises, OMWBE. When Grady first applied to be a certified DBE, Janae Radabaugh was assigned to the case. How suspicious did this application look? Extremely suspicious. Extremely. King 5 has obtained documents that explain what looks suspicious. While Kim Grady was listed as the owner in charge of it all, operations, bidding, and purchasing multi-million dollar trucks, she had zero construction experience. Her resume touted other skills. She worked at Nordstrom. L.A. Sun and Ski Tours and Pacific Food Service, but not one word about trucking. You can't have somebody who's worked in, say, retail sales for years and years and years who has never, ever been on a construction site knowledgeably bid a government job, nor can you have someone run that business without help from somebody else. The King 5 investigators have found there was somebody else around with the credentials to help. Her husband, Joe Grady. He's a seasoned project manager for KLB, a multi-million dollar construction business owned by his family. 
DBE rules are clear. The minority owner must be in charge. But in this case, was it her or her husband? The suspicion is that it is the husband that is running the show. So that state agency, OMWBE, gave Grady Excavating the bad news. You're denied entry into the program. How serious were you about saying, no, you are not eligible? I was absolutely serious um, and drafted the letter to deny as well as met with the owner and told her face to face that my belief was she was not eligible. Soon after, Radebach quit the agency for another state job, while Grady Excavating did anything but quit. They applied again, and this time around, OMWBE did an about face. The agency gave the company the stamp of approval opening the door to lucrative government contracts. What was your reaction? I was sickened by that. I was sure the firm was not eligible, and I, I could not conceive how they could have become certified based on the paperwork that I had seen. You've got to be wondering, how did that happen? So are we. No one from the state agency that certified the company, OMWBE, would talk to us. At this point, it's still a mystery. And there's something else. Remember, the DBE program is for people who historically have had a hard time competing in the business world, for companies that are truly disadvantaged. But does this look disadvantaged to you? The Grady's live in a waterfront home in Muckleteo, and they own a half million dollar vacation home in Leavenworth. We're not the only ones asking questions. There's another state agency involved in the program, the Department of Transportation, WashDOT. In a 2009 audit, WashDOT found red flags around Grady's blue trucks. WashDOT auditors wrote there's no clear explanation of how Kim Grady got the money to buy all those trucks and that she has no trucking experience. The kicker? WashDOT concluded the state should never have certified Kim Grady and that OMWBE should kick her out. Three years and millions of tax dollars later, that hasn't happened. What does that do to the little guy? It closes the little guy down. It blocks him from getting any of the contracts, which is why the program and the certification was created in the first place. Elton Mason believes if Grady weren't grabbing up millions of dollars worth of work, he'd have a lot better chance of putting his trucks back out on the road. Well, they've let us down. You know, uh, they continue to certify companies that don't belong in the program. And, you know, it's, it's just, you know, putting legit, you know, minority-owned businesses out of work. Now, all the experts we've talked to for this story say that last point is an important one. Just think how many DBEs, struggling companies, could have been helped by getting just a portion of the nearly 40 million tax dollars that Grady Excavating has earned in the last few years. As for Kim Grady, she denied our repeated requests for an mm -hmm. interview. She said she can't talk to us because the state has an open investigation on her company. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. We want to hear more about that, too. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Later. Susanna. Thanks, Susanna.